evening. Hi everybody, it's Dr. Ali. And we are here tonight to talk a little bit about managing holiday stress because that wonderful season is upon us. And I wanted to tackle a little bit about what stress is, um, how we can identify it, and maybe a couple of strategies on how we can not let it wear us down over the next few weeks. So I'm seeing it in the office, I'm seeing it with, you know, kids in my um, children's classes and I'm seeing it with friends that a lot of times this time of year is when people are getting sick and they are stressed out, um, especially moms who are trying to juggle, you know, uh, organizing functions and wrapping and buying presents and everything that comes with it and seeing in-laws and all of that jazz. So again, let's talk about what stress actually is and how we can let it not wear us down. So when we talk about stress, we always actually um, see it in a bit of a negative light. And I also want to change a little bit about how you think about that. But first, the definition of stress generally uh, from the di dictionary is um, our body's way of responding to any kind of demand or threat. So we can kind of break that into two parts. And part of that is our stress state or what happens to our body. And that's our body's response. And the other piece is the demand or threat, which we can kind of term as a stressor. So right now, uh, in this time of year, the holiday season is what is our stressor and how our body reacts and our body's response into that stress state is what happens to us. So we need to think of, shift our thinking a little bit about what stress is and how it can be negative and how we can actually use that um, for growth. So stress is a time that takes us out of our comfort zone. And we all know that um, getting out of our comfort zone is actually an opportunity for growth. This is where we learn new things, this is where we try new things, um, and this is where we have a chance to actually evolve and change. And so we can use stress as actually an opportunity for growth. So in chiropractic, we categorize stress into three main pieces. Um, those are physical stresses, chemical stresses, and emotional stresses. And each of those categories can have macro or big stresses, and they can also have micro or small stresses. So when we talk about physical, um, a macro physical stress would be, you know, if you're driving to the mall and you get into a car accident or you're putting up the lights outside and fall off the ladder. These are huge physical stresses that jolt your body into a stress state very, very quickly. A micro physical stress or a smaller stress is something that builds up over time. So this might be, you know, the sleeping posture that you do every night. This might be sitting at a computer day in and day out. This might be how you hold your body when you're on your phone or texting or reading. Um, so again, these are things that wear your body down over time. When we talk about chemical stresses, this is what we put into our body. So on a macro level, this might be you going to a function and eating something um, that wasn't good and you ending up with food poisoning and so you are expelling it from your body in all different kinds of ways for the next 24 hours. That would be a macro chemical stress. A micro chemical stress is what we're eating and drinking day to day. So really when we look at the holiday season, it, you know, it ends up being about whatever, five, six weeks long by the time we start into all the holiday functions at the end of November and it goes right till the new year. But in that whole time period, there's really only a couple of days where we actually have the holidays and, you know, there's an ex, you know, an extra amount of food and an extra amount of drink. Um, so we really want to kind of think about not using this whole holiday season as an excuse to just eat and drink whatever you want and worrying about it in the new year, um, but instead thinking about it during this whole time. So again, these micro stresses are just what you're doing day to day. This is a time when we're eating definitely a lot more sugary foods and we're consuming um, a lot more alcohol and drinks that aren't that good for us. The emotional stresses, which is the easy kind of component of the first component of stress that people think about on a macro level would be big things that are happening. So it might be, you know, the loss of someone in your family. It might be a huge change in the status at work or in your relationship. It might be a big move to a new city. Um, those are big macro emotional stresses. Micro emotional stresses are, again, smaller things that just build up. So it might be worrying about, you know, um, how you're going to have all these people in your house, what you're going to cook, what you're going to buy as gifts, how you're going to deal with all these kids in your house, running into someone that maybe isn't your favorite person. Those are all small micro emotional stresses that build up over time. So again, we talked about how the key is taking these negative component of stress and trying to turn it into something that can be fuel for growth and development instead. 
So in our body, um, we have our nervous system that can has two responses. So the first response is our sympathetic response, which is like our gas pedal, which is our fight or flight. This takes us out of, uh, it's us wanting to get out of a harmful situation. And it puts our body into a stress state. So this is where, you know, your heart beats fast and you're not worried about digestion. Your immune system's not working that well. You're not sleeping that well. You are in a stress state. The other side of our immune system is our parasympathetic side. And this is where it's like a brake pedal. This is where we grow. This is where we heal. This is where we sleep. This is where our immune system works, digestion. This is where we're supposed to spend most of our time. But unfortunately, most of us live in this stress state right now. And we have to figure out how to shift our bodies out of that stress state and into that rest and recovery and healing side or our brake pedal. So when we're stuck in that stress state, it's producing all kinds of different uh, havoc and on our systems in our body. And it's also driving a lot of negative hormones out into our body, which also then is not making us uh, function as well or feel as well. So quickly, let's just talk about four different strategies that we can use and helping us move um, out of that stress state and also just adapting to it and how we can use these stresses to move us further into growth and development and to actually get better. So the first one is connection. And this is actually where chiropractic falls in. So this is about our nervous system and how our brain talks to the rest of our body and how we can get our nervous system functioning at its best from top to bottom. So how can we get our nervous system to, to get out of that gas pedal or stress state into that rest and recovery or that brake pedal state? And this is what chiropractic does. It actually helps your body change from one state to another because it's normal that we kind of fall into that gas pedal or that stress state. We just don't want to get stuck here because when we get stuck in that stress state, that is when our body starts to wear down. This is where we're going to get symptoms and pain, and this is where disease can evolve. So if we can figure out how to get our body out of that stress state and into that brake pedal, that is where our body is going to start to heal and grow, and we're going to be able to adapt to these stresses. The second strategy is going to be movement. So again, it's uh, it's really easy as our schedules get busier to fall out of maybe any kind of exercise or movement routine you'd been doing for the rest of the year. And again, don't use this as an excuse that you can just start in January, right? This period is five weeks long. I know it's busy, but we can just modify that schedule. So if you were doing you know, two or three classes at a gym, up until now, maybe we have to drop that down to one class at the gym, but maybe we can go for a walk another day or you can watch a YouTube video or do some stretching in your house. Um, something that is scheduled that is movement. Again, this is gonna be great for you know hormones, the good hormones going through our body, it's gonna help us sleep and it's gonna take us out of that stress state. The third strategy is going to be eating. So again, this is thinking about those chemical stresses that are going into our body. Um, you know, I was just at a function on the weekend and it was a buffet full of, you know, lots and lots of food and then, of course, lots and lots of desserts. And I am the first person that if you bring out that tray of desserts and it includes a butter tart, I am going to run to that butter tart. But if I'm going to have that butter tart, maybe I don't need to have that slice of cheesecake, the butter tart and a cookie or two. Okay, so it's about realizing, you know, what you're doing and what you're choosing. You don't need to go up, you know, for three rounds and three plates of food, and you don't need to eat the whole pie when you can have a slice of pie. So you're gonna have those couple of big holiday days where maybe you are indulging a little bit more in your beverages or in your food, but all those other days you can really think about and be conscious of what you're eating. So if you know you have a function on the Saturday, maybe Monday to Friday, you really want to think about what you're eating and not put so much of the bad stuff into your body. The fourth strategy is mindset. And this is a really big one, especially when we're talking about shifting how we're perceiving stress going into the holiday season. So again, um, a big one that I think, especially if you're someone who suffers from anxiety, is meditation. And meditation has been around for thousands of years, and it doesn't have to be you sitting on a mat, you know, with your legs crossed and burning candles or anything like that. Um, there are new apps that you can get for your phone where literally it will take you, you know, five or ten minutes of your day, and you can do a meditation. 
This can be done first thing in the morning before you go to bed. Maybe it can be done in your driveway right before you're going into your house um, to deal with the chaos of the evening. These are just great little simple tools that help you to be in the moment. Meditation actually helps you just be in the moment. And a huge piece of anxiety or what anxiety actually is, it's a fear of what may happen in the future, right? What may happen when those people arrive at your house or when you see that person that isn't your favorite or what are you going to buy? So when you're thinking about all that stuff that's happening in the future, you're not in the present. And if we can get you thinking and being in the present, you cannot worry about the future. So if meditation isn't for you, another way to bring yourself into the present is to focus on your breathing. And again, this can be just done for, you know, a few minutes where you literally just focus on inhaling and exhaling to bring you back to the moment. If you're thinking about the moment, you cannot be in the future. So this is all about living right now so that you're not worried about what may or may not happen. Um, another big piece that I like to talk about with this season, and you will see it on Christmas cards and hear it in commercials and read it everywhere, is gratitude. And this is a time where we are lucky to you know, be around a lot of family and friends that maybe we don't see a ton the rest of the year. If you have kids that are away at school, we get them home for this couple of weeks. Um, you know, if a lot of us are lucky enough to have the means to buy gifts for family and friends. Um, we're getting together with people. We have the opportunity to go to functions. This is a great time to be in gratefulness and thankfulness. And it is known too, when you are in those, um, those spirits of thankfulness and gratefulness, you cannot be angry or sad or depressed. So when you have all these happy hormones going through you as you are in gratefulness, um, your body starts to become what you're thinking about. And we know that physiology becomes biology. You are what you think. So the more that you are in that gratitude, more of those happy hormones are going through you. And again, that is going to turn your spirit to that happy one as well. So again, just think about um, the situation that you are in. Try and be in the present and be thankful. Um, so again, just to recap quickly, I told you this was gonna be quick and easy and hopefully give you some value. We want to change the way we think about stress this holiday season. So we wanna take this to think about stress as an opportunity for growth, where we can actually you know, level up and become better and use it as a chance to adapt and become um, stronger and learn new things and cope better and adapt better. So the four ways that we can do that is connection, movement, eating, and mindset. So again, um, this is your chance to um, use all of these strategies and move forwards and get to enjoy this next four weeks, I guess, that we have left here um, with everyone around us. So I am very grateful for all of you that tuned in. Please send me a note if you'd like any other um, information or help uh, as we go through the season. And again, all the best. Enjoy your family and friends. Be here now. Talk to you soon.